So how would you teach fractions to elementary students? This is what this video is going to focus on when we take a look at some practice problems from Praxis Elementary Math Content Knowledge 7813, Understanding Fractions and Misconceptions, Instructional Decision Making, Analyzing Student Thinking, Identifying Conceptual Errors, Supporting Fraction Understanding. My name is Tom and I'm a test prep expert here at study.com and I'm going to walk you through some of the problems you may see on the test. Okay, are you ready? Let's get started. A student says one fourth must be bigger than one half because four is bigger than two. Which instructional approach is the most appropriate to address this misconception? Is it A, tell the student to memorize that one half is bigger than one fourth? Is it B, move immediately to comparing decimals? Is it C, ask the student to model one half and one fourth using a folded paper or fraction strips? Is it D, teach division before continuing with fractions. Okay, so let's eliminate some wrong answers. Telling the students to memorize in choice A, I'm going to eliminate that because we don't want to just memorize. We want to have students understand the concept. Choice B, move immediately to comparing decimals. I'm going to eliminate choice B. We're not going to move on until students understand the previous concept when we're comparing fractions. Choice D, teach division before continuing with fractions. Well, the fraction bar does represent division, but it is not going over the concept of which fraction is bigger than the other. So I'm going to eliminate choice D. So the correct answer here would be choice C, ask the student to model one half and one fourth using a folded paper or fraction strip. So we're using hands-on manipulatives to help the students understand. A student adds two-fifths plus one-half by adding numerators and denominators to get three-sevenths. What should the teacher do to best address this misunderstanding? Is it A, tell the student the correct answer immediately? B, introduce visual fraction models to explain why common denominators are needed? Is it C, ignore the error and reteach fraction multiplication instead? Is it D, have students memorize key fraction addition facts? All right, so let's eliminate some possibilities. Again, I see memorize in here. So we don't want to have students memorize. We want them to learn the concept. Okay, so we're going to eliminate choice D. I'm going to eliminate choice A. Just telling the student the correct answer immediately isn't going to help them understand how to add fractions. Okay, so we have to go over conceptually what's happening here. Again, choice C is a bad answer because we don't want to ignore the error and reteach fraction multiplication. Instead, we're moving on and we're ignoring um, the problems that the student's having. So we eliminate C. So the correct answer here would be B, introduce visual fraction models to explain why common denominators are needed. After a lesson on equivalent fractions, a student states that 2 fourths and 3 sixths are different because the numbers aren't the same. What would be the most effective instructional next step? Is it A, use a number line to show that 2 fourths and 3 sixths located at the same point? Is it B, tell the students to memorize equivalent fraction rules? Is it C, move forward without correcting the misconception? Is it D, only review multiplication facts? All right, so let's eliminate some obvious wrong choices. So we're never going to move forward without correcting. Okay, so we're going to eliminate choice C. We want to make sure students understand before we move on. I see in choice B the word memorize, and just like in the previous problems, we're not going to just teach students to memorize, we're going to teach them the concepts. So I'm going to eliminate choice B. Choice D, only review multiplication facts. Well, if we only review multiplication facts, we're eliminating the concept of comparing equivalent fractions, all right? So we're going to eliminate choice D. So a good strategy here would be choice A, use a number line to show that two-fourths and three-sixths are located at the same point on the number line, so they must be equivalent. So the correct answer is choice A. A group of students struggles to explain why multiplying a number by three-fourths makes it smaller. Which instructional decision best addresses this confusion? Is it A, tell students to memorize rules for multiplying fractions? Is it B, switch topics to fraction division? Is it C, repeat multiplication drills? Or is it D, use scaling problems, e.g. resizing a recipe to demonstrate the effect. Okay, so let's eliminate some choices. So again, memorize. We're not going to teach students just to memorize things. So I'm eliminate choice A. Choice B is ignoring the struggles they're having in, in switching topics. So we don't want to move on to a new topic until we understand the previous topic. So I'm going to eliminate choice B. Choice C, repeat multiplication drills, isn't necessarily going to help them understand why the concept of multiplying by a fraction that would make it smaller. So I'm going to eliminate choice C. 
So the correct answer here was to use scaling problems, e.g. resizing a recipe to demonstrate the effect. So you're using a real life problem to help students understand the effects of multiplying by three fourths. Okay, that concludes our video. Fractions can be a difficult concept for students. Hopefully you gain strategies for not only passing the Praxis test, but also strategies you can use in your own classroom. For more practice, check out our Praxis Elementary Math Content Knowledge 7813 playlist. And for even more detailed practice strategies and customizable study materials, head over to study.com and check out our Praxis test prep course. Those who use study.com boast a 92% pass rate. Our courses include full-length exams, hundreds of authentic practice questions, and short, targeted video lessons specifically developed based on the latest test updates. With our resources, you'll know exactly what to expect on test day. Like this video and subscribe to this channel, and please leave your questions and success stories in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Happy studying.